If you've ever been a fan of DOS gaming, you've probably played Star Control 2. Released in 1992 to excellent reviews, this sequel to Star Control built upon its predecessor in every way, including the scope of the story, the size of the galaxy to explore, and expanded melee combat. Upon release, the game met near-universal acclaim from gaming publications, game designers, and players. What's not as widely acknowledged is that Star Control 2 also innovated in a technical area. It was among the first DOS games to have extensive multi-channel sample-based music for its entire soundtrack. Soliciting the work of multiple Amiga Tracker musicians, this gave the game a sort of retro techno sound aesthetic, which was a departure from the usual synthesized music popular in DOS games. Having been a fan of the Amiga tracking scene for a few years when the game came out, I also enjoyed the soundtrack. When I saw one of my favorite tracker musicians, Mark Brown, listed in the game credits, I wanted to see which tune was his, so I ripped out all the song files to find Mark's tune. There was only one problem. Mark's music was nowhere to be found. A little while later, I found online the tune he wrote for Star Control 2 and confirmed it wasn't included in the data files. This has bothered me for literally decades, so today we're going to get to the bottom of a nearly 30-year-old mystery. What happened to Mark Brown's Star Control 2 music, and why is he in the credits if his music isn't in the game? The idea for Star Control 2's music technology started in 1991, when the game's designers Paul Ricci and Fred Ford became enamored with the Amiga's digital capabilities porting Star Control 1 to the Amiga. They decided they wanted Star Control 2 to do what the Amiga did, which was 100% sampled audio. When we began porting Star Control to the Amiga and to the Sega Genesis, it was 1990, maybe 1991, and we wanted to find a new digital sound format. But that required searching it out. So we ended up going to bulletin board sites, BBS sites, where you could upload and download files, hunting for things named .mod. While delighted they had discovered the world of Amiga mod music, this actually caused two problems for them. Tracked music on the PC was still in its infancy in 1991, so there wasn't a lot of reference material out there explaining how to interpret mod files or mix multiple channels of sampled audio in real time. I don't know where we ended up finding it, but we ended up finding um, so uh, software somebody had written in Finland. Uh, we had to re reverse engineer the Finnish language to determine what exactly was happening in the software. But um, we, did, we did make use of the software, which was sort of the base, base for our mod player on the PC. The second problem for the team was how foreign the mod music scene was for PC game developers. They couldn't rely on existing game music contacts. The artists who were making this sound weren't, this music, weren't the same musicians that we were used to using for games. They were somewhere out there. So we had to find a collection of artists whom we didn't know, we'd never met. They decided to put their music in the hands of the Amiga Mod Music community. They came up with a contest asking for music submissions to the game, with cash prizes and copies of the game as rewards. This contest was originally announced on The Well, an online virtual community established in 1985, but it wasn't until fellow designer and writer Robert Leyland reposted it on Usenet that it got more widespread attention. By the time the contest was over, they had enough submissions to get started. Later in the development process, they contracted Riku, a contest participant, and Dan Nicholson, whose works they'd found crawling BBSs, to create more Alien Race themes and other small pieces to round out the soundtrack. So, let's return to Mark Brown's Star Control 2 music credit. Did he participate in the contest? We can confirm from several sources that he did. There are multiple Usenet posts from during and after the contest that confirm his participation. And of course, there's that pesky issue of his name being in the credits. So where's his music? Over the years, I've formulated several hypotheses. Mark Brown is an alias for someone else whose music is indeed in the game. The music is actually in the game, and I've just missed it. His music wasn't good enough to be included, but they gave him a prize for participating. Fred Ford's code couldn't play his music because it was too technically complex. The music was so good it couldn't be used, as it made all the other submissions look bad in comparison. The style wasn't what Paul and Fred were looking for, but, like before, it gave him a prize just for participating. Let's tackle these one by one. Was Mark Brown a fictional name or alias? 
This is easy to disprove. He was definitely a real person. I first started emailing Mark in 1992 when I found his email address in the sample text of his tune called Testink, released under his handle Maruku Marunu. He later joined the demo group Megawatts alongside another famous scene musician, Euphoria. He was active on Usenet until 1994, and I kept in touch with him sporadically until 1999, so I can confirm he was a real person. If that's not it, then maybe I simply made a mistake. Is his music actually in the game? This is also easy to disprove, as Mark released his music a few months after the end of the contest as SC2 Maru Combat. I'll play the full tune at the end of this video, but a quick listen proves to anyone who has finished the game that it isn't included. And if you search for the sample data he used, that's not found in the game either. Okay, so now we start to enter the realm of pure conjecture. Was the music simply bad? Was it too terrible to use, but they gave him a prize anyway just for participating? As you're about to hear, the answer to that is emphatically no. It's goddamn amazing. Using only 11 samples that fit into less than 45 kilobytes, He was able to create a hard-hitting battle song with an intro section, different lay motifs every 30 seconds or so, and a seamless loop after 2 minutes, making it perfect for the melee portion of the game. Let's listen to the first 30 seconds, and keep an eye on that pattern data. Now that we've seen the pattern data of Mark's tune, we can confirm there are Pro Tracker specific effects in it, such as E9 to retrigger a note several times in a row. Was it possible Fred Ford's mod player code couldn't play every Pro Tracker effect, and as such couldn't use Mark's tune? I'm not the first person to suspect this. Chibi Tech on Twitter felt the same way I do about Mark's song, and posited the same thing, writing, the mod file uses ProTracker extended commands, including the CIA timer based BPM extension on F. Check out the F7D command succeeding the F08 command at the start of the track. That means the track probably ran hella slow for the devs. In private correspondence with Fred, he wrote, Well, for a fact, my mod player was by no means perfect. I found Amiga C code, although I not only had to reverse engineer the variable names, but also figure out how to mix the channels onto a PC speaker, among other things. Some things definitely didn't sound the way they were supposed to. Subtle, but noticeable, if you were really listening. But I think I would remember that. Fred is right. ProTracker effects were handled correctly. This is easily proven by looking at some of the other music in the game. For example, Riku confirmed the hyperspace theme had plenty of extended effects commands. Fred's code wasn't to blame. What about the thought that Mark's tune put the others to shame and would have been too jarring to include as a result? While the sardonic teenage hacker in me would like to believe that, it simply isn't true. Nearly 30 years later, Star Control 2's soundtrack is still popping up on best of lists. In 2015, Fact Magazine ranked it 37 out of 100 of the greatest video game soundtracks of all time. Ask any Star Control 2 fan what they think about the music, and you'll always get a glowing review. So, we're left with our last hypothesis. Maybe they loved his music and wanted to acknowledge it, but couldn't actually use it in the game. The only way to definitively solve this mystery is to go to the source. I was able to get in contact with Paul and Fred, and it was during this conversation that we finally get to the truth. Paul wrote me this. I did like Mark's Maru combat mod, and did intend to use it as the combat theme in our game. What changed my mind was that after playing Melee with that mod a few dozen times, I developed the real, or perhaps imagined, belief that the music was too full to let the sounds of combat be heard. I asked Dan Nicholson to take a schwack at an alternate piece, and he created Battle, which is what we ended up using in the game. I wish I could have found a place to put Mark's piece, but I failed. Not Mark's problem, but mine. So now we have our answer. Mark's music was indeed in the game during development, but was taken out after playtesting revealed that it didn't quite fit the designer's vision.
But they wanted to honor Mark's contribution, so he was awarded prize money, a free copy of the game, and an official game industry music credit. One of the benefits of archiving game history data is that we can sometimes explore alternate outcomes. I've always wondered what Star Control 2 Melee would have sounded like if Mark's tune had stayed in the game. Thanks to dedicated archivists, we can do just that. Here's Mark's full Maru Combat tune, integrated into some Super Melee sessions. For links to various files featured in this video, check out the video's description. I'd like to give a big thank you to Paul and Fred for answering my questions, to Space Game Junkie for providing gameplay footage, and to Aaron, Dan, and Riku for answering yet more questions. And finally, huge thanks to Maruku Barunu for giving the community hours of enjoyable mods. Wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. <laughs>